Welcome back. You're still with us on Markets Today. Let's go to the rest of the headlines that we are tracking for you. The fourth headline now, Dalmia Bharat clocked gains today after agreeing to sell its 42.36% stake in Dalmia Bharat refractories uh, to promote a group, uh, that is Sarvapriya Healthcare. Uh, Nigel is here with all those details and what led to this surge in stock. Nigel. Well, that's right. It's good news coming in for uh, the Dalmia group on the whole because they've gone ahead and they've exited their 42% stake in Dalmia Bharat Refractories business. Remember, they had around 42% odd and uh, the total consideration that they'll be getting for this is around 800 crores. The entity that's buying this, this stake, this 42% stake, is the promoter entity. And the company is, uh, you know, they've given a timeline that they expect this uh, deal to be consummated in the next 30 days uh, or so. They've also given the timeline with the payment uh, outgo. So first up, they'll receive around 20% of the consideration, which is around 160 crores odd. And the following two payments of around 320 crores each will be via NCDs, which will uh, give uh, you know, uh, an interest of closure around 8.5%. Now, why is this positive for the group? One is because they said they're going to be exiting their non-core uh, investments, and that's what they're doing. So step in the right direction. Second, they are aggressively looking to add capacity, and they're headed towards a 100 million tons uh, a target that they had. So it gives them more cash in their hands that they can use it for this expansion. And point number three is the street was a little bit wary that maybe they'll do some inorganic growth, which will be in an unrelated space. Now, if this asset goes to the promoter entity, then that inorganic growth in an unlisted space will be done by the promoter entity and not from the listed entity. And that's why the street likes what they're seeing in terms of uh, them divesting this asset. Back to you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Nigel, for joining us uh, with those details. And a whole host of stocks, they are they were in focus in today's trading session on the back of fresh ro uh, brokerage growths. Rans Industries, for instance, was uh, higher by 2% after domestic brokerage firm Kotak Institutional Equities. They called the stock a compelling buy uh, at current levels. In fact, in the report, they go on to say, RIL's recent underperformance has been quite puzzling. And uh, across key verticals, the outlook is quite positive. Uh, they speak about the energy segment where earnings are according to them, will continue to be very robust. In telecom, rising competitive intensity and uh, the delay in tariffs uh, by, or by 2024 elections is something that will see an impact and it will lead to uh, some margin compression. However, it will also lead to duopoly and result in accelerated market share gains for Reliance Geo, uh, according to the brokerage. In retail, recent acquisitions, store expansions and entry in new verticals for them is positive. Reliance, according to them, will have market leadership across several verticals, uh, but they have lowered their FI24, FI25 EBITDA by 5% on the back of the tariff hike delay that they've been seeing. Uh, but overall, they are very positive. They reiterate their buy with a target price of 2,900 rupees per share. And that is about uh, Reliance Industries, but I'm tracking one more stock for you, and that is Phoenix Mills. That is also on our radar. This is after Morgan Stanley has initiated a coverage on the stock. It ended higher by 3%. Uh, so they have an overweight rating with a target price of 1,700 rupees per share. Uh, they say this has a portfolio of well-located mixed-use destination malls and set to benefit from India's growing consumption story as well. Plus, it is an expansion phase which will work well for the company and they aim to more than double their rental portfolio over the next three to four years. They have planned an expansion of their rental assets which is from 9 million square feet in FY22 to 21 million square feet in FY27 and this should drive an EBITDA CAGR of 27% for the company and that's why uh, they like. This is the second positive note or an initiating coverage on Phoenix Mills in just last seven days. So brokerages, of course, are looking at this stock very positively. Moving on now, both Eminem and Scott saw ratings downgrades earlier today. Nimesha is standing by with what the analysts make of these two auto stocks. Nimesh. So it's a rare downgrade coming in on Eminem. In fact, you know, Eminem has been a big rank for outperformer in the auto names for the last one year. And today, Bofa has downgraded the stock to neutral from buy, and they've cut the target price to 1320 versus 1500 earlier. Even on, uh, they reiterated this, their, the negative stance or the underperformer uh, rating on escorts as well, and there they've also cut the target price to 1700 versus 1800 earlier. Now, coming specifically to uh, specifically on MNM, uh, Bofa believes that you know, they, in fact, they've revised the EPS down by three percent to factoring in a mild uh, uh, tractor down cycle and uh, in a cut in the UV volumes going forward. In fact, uh, they believe that uncertain uh, farm outlook, earnings downgrade, and uh, la lack of m uh, meaningful catalyst are the near-term negative triggers for MNM, and that's going to weigh on the on the on the sentiment on, on the stock as well going forward. And in fact, they believe that the street is overestimating uh, the upscale in the UV business. As far as the tractor industry is concerned, uh, Bofa believes, and they've actually uh, you know cut the uh, volumes uh, by by three to four percent. 
for FY24, and and they and they say that if if that El Nino has to be taken into account, then the decline for the tractor industry could be eight to ten percent. Though that's not the base case, but that's the risk for the tractor industry going forward. So on back of big outperformance, the fact that M&M is a big outperformer, and uh, given the headwinds for the sector today, uh, Bofa has cut the uh, ratings on M&M to neutral, and they've cut the target position of the 1320 versus 1500 earlier. All right, that's all about the stocks which are in focus on the back of fresh brokerage notes. Moving on with that now, beauty and skincare brand Mama Earth has denied reports that the company has shelved its IPO plans. Speaking to CNBC TV 18, company CEO and co-founder Varun Alak said that the reports of a company withdrawing from the IPO process are baseless and unfounded, adding that he expects there be approval on the DRHP by next month. Queries is a standard part of the regulator's process. They want to make sure uh, that enough uh, clarification, uh, risk assessment is being added to DRHP so that consumers can make the right decisions and retail investors can make the right decisions. And I think they have uh, uh, they have shared their queries. We have already responded to all of the queries. We first, start focusing on getting this approval away. And, uh, and post that, we want to get together with our syndicate right, and have a conversation around what is the best timing to file RHP. Okay, that's the word coming in from Mama Earth. Moving on, iconic houseware brand Cello World is looking at raising about 2,000 crore rupees via an IPO. The planned IPO is likely to be a mix of fresh and offer for sale. The company is likely to file its papers with SEBI by August. Yash Jen is here with more details. Yash. Well, it's been really long since we spoke about the primary market action or the IPO market action. And we're sort of restarting that today. And what a company to really restart that with. Uh, uh, Cello World is the company that we're speaking about. Our sources have told CNBC TV 18 is that Cello World is looking uh, to launch its IPO. The intention would be to raise approximately about 2,000 crore rupees. Sources tell CNBC TV 18 that the IPO could be a combination of fresh issue through which some funds will come into the company, which is expected to be used towards uh, strengthening the distribution network. Also, there's an offer for sale element into it, which means existing shareholders would also look to sell partial stake belonging to them. As far as the process itself is concerned, we've been given to understand that Cello World has already started engaging with the bankers. In fact, IIFL, ICICI Securities, as well as JM Financial have been appointed to lead the IPO process. Uh, as far as the timeline is concerned, sources tell us that the company would look uh, to file its DRHP with market regulated SEBI sometime by August of this year and eventually launch uh, its IPO by the end of current calendar year. As far as the, the kind of businesses are concerned, it's a long list where the company is present today, uh, starting from home essentials uh, like drinkware, lunch boxes, cookware, dinnerware, to sort of coming to bathroom accessories, uh, air purifiers, vegetable and fruit washer, UV sanitizers. Also, the company is present in uh, the basic uh, entry level furnitures also. Uh, there are listed companies which are sort of involved in businesses which are bits and pieces of what Cello does. But having all these different kinds of businesses under one company, it'll be an interesting IPO to watch out for. Okay, Yash, thank you so much for joining us with those details. To the fifth headline now, modestly better sentiment after Silicon Valley Bank finds a buyer for its deposits and loans keeps gold prices below the $2,000 mark. Manisha Gupta is here with the analysis and all those details. Manisha. Well, yes, gold has eased for a second straight day, moving away now from its record highs. It's down by nearly 1,500 rupees from an all-time high that we saw in the Indian markets. The international market saw a high of $2,009 per ounce, and we seem to be holding around that 1970 right now. So we've come off those kind of levels as well. Well, as the central bank governments, uh, central banks and governments effort to stabilize the banking crisis, that has really eased off concerns into the market. We have seen risk aversion ease a bit also and there is buying coming back in global equity markets. So the flight to safety that we saw in sense of gold seems to be really reducing a bit here. Also, we had seen huge amount of buying open interest and speculative longs. So there is some profit taking that we see in the market coming in because of that too. The other major point is the dollar index, which has rebounded from a seven-week lows. We did see 101 off a level as well in the previous week. We're trading at 103. 
three right now. So that seems to be putting pressure on gold as well. But going forward, the markets do believe that inflation, uh, lower growth, some bit of a recession concerns is something that you would continue to see going forward into the year as well. So buying on dips is still a strategy. For the month of March, we have seen the gold prices gain up by nearly 7%. And for the current year, the first quarter of this year, we are up by nearly 9.5% for the yellow metal. Okay, Manisha, thank you so much for joining us. So that's all about gold. Let's move on to the taxation bit now. Angel tax will now be applicable to investments made by foreign investors in unlisted companies from April 1, 2023. Saurabh Srivastava, co-founder and former chairman at NASCOM, says no other country in the world has imposed this tax mainly due to its negative implications on the startup ecosystem. Take a look. In some ways, this rule has the reverse effect of what we really want. We don't want our companies to flip overseas. If we put these rules, this make it difficult for foreign investors to invest in India. 85% of the risk capital, venture capital, private equity, angel investments, 85% of that capital that goes into the Indian startup ecosystem actually is foreign capital. No country in the world has got into trying to value, government trying to value uh, startups in terms of imposing angel tax. Okay, all right. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Markets Today. Thank you for watching.